I've made what I think is the least complex implementation of the new input system in Unity. The system that I've got here does have its limitations, but it avoids the complexity of a lot of the other setups that I've seen and just says exactly what you need for keybinds and movement. There's so many different ways you can set this up. I watched about seven or eight different tutorials preparing for this one about the new input system, and I feel like everybody had their own little ways of setting certain things up. So I think that's really confusing for new people. Um, you know, there's so many different ways because it's very flexible, uh, and that can be really overwhelming. So my goal here today is to show you this really simple setup so you can get a foothold and then use that to kind of learn more uh, advanced versions of this that are going to be more flexible. The one limitation of this setup I'm showing you today is that you have to have the input action asset attached to the game object that you want to control. Certainly possible to not have it attached, but that's a slightly more complex setup. I'm just going to cover this simple way for now. If you're wondering why you should use the new input system, uh, it's more flexible in a modular way. One example is if you want to have an input action map to two different keys or buttons. Like, let's say you want your character to jump if you hit the space bar or a button on your controller. That's really easy to do. This is an overview of the steps in this video. So step one is installing the new input system. Let's go ahead and go to Window and then Package Manager. And under the drop down here, select Unity Registry. Then just type input in the search bar or find input system and click install. You'll have to wait a bit and the editor re will restart. And then you'll know you've installed it correctly if you look at the asset in the package manager and it says remove rather than install. Then I'll create a cube and add a component to it. I'm going to add a player input component. Uh, this is just the cube that I want to be able to control. In order to set up your keybinds, you'll need to create an input action asset. And if you're new to this, it might be easier just to click this button right here, which will create a template for you with some of the actions already set up. That's what I'm going to do today. So uh, let's do that. And then we can open up our input action asset and check out what it's got. On the left, you can see action maps. On the right, you can see actions. Action maps are basically collections of actions. We're just going to focus on one map for now. And we're going to be looking at the actions uh, area over on the right here. Uh, we've got move, look, and fire. So if we click down this down arrow here, we see a couple different binds for that move action there. We've got the left stick gamepad, WASD, um, et cetera there. So some of these are set up differently. You can click on this and look on the right just to get a clue of what's going on here. And also this top one here has some stuff going on. It might look pretty confusing at first, but it's not too bad. Um, and then down here, fire. That's just a single button. We can look, you know, right trigger, left mouse button, etc. So I'm going to create uh, quickly a new move action. Uh, I'll just call it move two. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to delete this binding right here. And let's look at this right here. Uh, we've got the action type as button. If we go up here, we can see value and vector two. So I'm just going to do the same thing here for now. Value and pass through. Those are both options here, but value is going to be the one we'll choose. And then control type, we'll just go down here to vector 2. So now we can see it's the same as this top one here. We can click this plus button here and add a couple different bindings. If you were doing the left stick gamepad, we would do this one right here. But since I'm going to do uh, you know the arrow keys or something similar, I'll just do this one right here. And so it's a 2D vector. And we'll go up, down, left, right, quickly set up our bindings. We can click this here. And uh, I don't know why it's hidden behind here, but this is a button I can click to listen. And so if I click that, I can just hit the up arrow. And there it is. I'll just quickly do that for the rest of them here. Let's down. There we go. And then uh, why don't we do quickly uh, add another binding here. We'll just do the gamepad left controller or left uh, left stick there and since I did that I'll just delete these other guys here so you know now move to is the one we're going to be accessing and uh, instead of fire let's just do a quick one for maybe jump so we'll go jump there we'll add a binding and this is just going to be a button which uh, it's already set up as that's good that's what we want and then for the binding Let's just go spacebar. 
here we go. Once you've modified this, just make sure to save it. Um, you know, auto save can be checked as well, but uh, if this is not saved, then your input actions won't update and won't work correctly. So I'm going to dock this over here and let's just go ahead and create a script and we'll call this player controls. We'll open that up. Let's start off by adding a using statement. We're going to need to access the new input system here just from the top. So using unity engine dot input system and then do a semicolon. Let's go back into the editor for a second and I just want to draw your attention to um, these, you know, things right here. If we click on the cube and we're in the inspector, uh, it's not easy to read because the text is so small. But uh, just under behavior here, you see, you know, all these things here on device lost, on device regained, etc., etc. And if we look closely, we can find on move to and on jump. And those are the two ones we created. So whenever you create a new action there, It'll show up down here, and this is what we want to be accessing right here. This is actually, like I said, only one way to do it. There's several different ways. This is an easy way to do it. So we're going to start off with on jump, and uh, we're going to go down below update here. Uh, we're actually not going to use start, so I'll, I guess I'll get rid of that, and I'll get rid of the uh, message for update. We're going to go void on jump. We want to write it exactly how it was on in the editor there. And then in uh, brackets here, we've got some stuff we're going to pass in. And we're going to go input value. And we can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it value. This has to be written like this, but value can be, you know, whatever word you want. And then let's go to the, get the brackets here. And uh, we'll go if value dot is pressed. And uh, we can go down here. Let's just go for now. Debug.log, you know, player is jumping. We'll end that and save it. Now in the editor, I'm going to attach that script to my game object. And that's actually all we have to do. We just have to put that method in our script. We can press play. And if I press space, we can see in the console that uh, player is jumping. Now let's set up the vector too. It's slightly more complicated, but not by that much. So. Uh, if you recall, you know, it was on move two this time. And we're going to do a similar thing here again, input value. And we'll just go value and then create those brackets. And inside here, um, we actually want to create a variable at the top to use inside here first. So let's go uh, create a vector two at the top here. And we'll just call it move input. And then in here, we'll go move input is equal to the value dot get and then we'll go vector two and then we'll uh, under update let's just go maybe debug dot log and we'll go move input so now we can just see the move input as we press the buttons so now let's go ahead and press play again here and if you recall, I set up with the arrow buttons. So if I hit the arrow buttons there, we can see in the bottom left corner, uh, it's just writing to the console, depending on which direction I'm pressing. And I'll just pick up a controller here, try the same thing. So let's get it past this debug stage. I'm going to quickly add a uh, plane here. And let's just move the plane down a tiny bit. And, um, We'll just take the cube and we'll add a rigid body. And then let's go back into the script here and we'll just go rigid body RB. And uh, <clears throat> I guess I shouldn't have erased the, st uh, the start there, but I'll just use an awake it anyways. <clears throat> this is just to cache the reference for the rigid body. And uh, look at that, it's already suggesting it for me. That's so nice. So um, rigid body, just get component there. And then we'll go right here under update and we'll go rb dot add force and um, yeah we'll just go move input should be that easy let's try that out okay here we are let's press start and let's see so there we go i can move it with the arrow keys and uh, up actually goes straight up for some reason oh you know what let's go back into the script here and um, we'll go move input dot x and then 
zero and then move input dot y because um, we want actually, we we want that y input to move it forward and backwards rather than up and down. So let's take a look at that again. That's what I want to happen right there. Perfect. Okay, we got this cube that can move around, and if I press the controller, same thing. Perfect. Let's go back into the script here, and um, we'll go for the jump. We'll go rb dot velocity equals new vector three. And we'll go rb dot velocity dot x, and then this is going to be our force going upwards. So let's go twenty f. And then we'll just go rb dot velocity dot y. And the reason I'm doing that part there is just so that you know if I jump, I don't want um, you know it to cancel the velocity that it's already got going on x or y. It should actually be z right here. So let's go back into the editor. Let's go take a look. And now if we press space, uh, we can jump. So probably a little too high, but that's okay, we can adjust that, and there we go. So there you go, that's how you can use the new input system for your Unity project. I hope that was straightforward for you, but if you have any questions, please let me know, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thanks for watching, have a great day.